take me to the day of that 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 video that broke the internet Which where <laughs> <laughs> i know there's millions of them <laughs> but that particular yeah. one where you you there's blood all over mm, you. My trauma. You're being beat down in what looks like yeah. a, an office in a hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to correct all of that for us mm. and just take us step by step. Mm. Take me to that day. Mm. How did it start? Where were you going? Because so for us, it looks like this guy was going to act like a doctor once again <laughs> at a hospital. Yeah. What's the truth? So um, that was on the 29th of October on a Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. It was on a Sunday. So, in our NGO, um, so as I said earlier on, we drop off patients, right? So, on the 27th of October, um, two days earlier, we were working in Region B where Helen Joseph is located, and we dropped off a patient there. And when we drop off a patient, we have a drop-off form that we keep a copy, the facility has a copy. The facility stamps our copy. My information is there. So that's what we did. For me, although the drama was happening, for me it had to be business as usual, you understand. So we dropped off a patient. Our contact information is there. My name is there. I left, right? Again, I did a video, like I always do when I'm at a facility, and I left. So because they could see Jorge at the back, if you know a hospital, man, you know this, this hospital, Anna Moske, Helen Joseph. Then on that Sunday, it was around 3 p.m., um, we get a, a, a WhatsApp. And it's a WhatsApp from a staff member at Helen Joseph saying that, listen, um, we need you guys to come and do a statement for the patient that you dropped off because mm -hmm. the patient is an unknown patient. Mm -hmm. That is normal. For you to do, especially if we don't have next of kin, anything, and the patient might be on their dying bed. You know, the facility needs to try, involve social development, try to locate the family. Sure. So for us, it was nothing out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, okay, we told them that, listen, we are working in Kajuso. Once we're done, because we are in Malville, Malville is five minutes from Helen Joseph. Sure. We will come by write it, leave. I should have listened to my friend slash is like, mm -mm. something is fishy. La. And I'm like, ah, man, doesn't matter. And why uh, um, she said that it was because it was Sunday. We had said, no, we'll come on Monday. And, but, and then they were like, okay, please come. The people that dropped him must come. And on that Monday, I was going on my leave because of this whole drama. And they insisted, but like, no, we need all the people that were, that dropped off this patient. We need them, need them. And that's when my friend was like, and I guess set up. And for me, I was like, ah, let's go. Okay. We went, it was, we went to the office, dropped off what we needed to drop off. Our, our way back, we passed by Helen Joseph. It was around 7 PM. We entered through the casualty of Helen Joseph, um, and at that time, the emergency ward was not, they were renovating it. So it was the one upstairs. So we went there. I'm like, hi, this is who I am. We got this. So yeah, the nurse is like, no, sit down. Okay, no problem. We sit. And then I'm like, okay, I want to go to the bathroom. I stand up. I go to the bathroom. As I'm like, literally in front of the bathroom door, three security guards they stop me. Yay, yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait. Okay. Yeah. Come with us. Come with us. Okay. The Dr. Matthew thing is not in my mind. You understand? I'm like, how? What did I do now? You understand? Hey, okay, we go to the um, to the what is this thing called? To the um, security room. Mm -hmm. They were like, sit down. Somebody's gonna come and talk to you. I'm like, okay, regarding what? Now, I thought that, okay, maybe we did something in the parking lot because this room has, you know, monitors, CCTV monitors. I'm like, Ivo, what did we do? They're like, no, don't worry, sit here. I am sitting. I think I probably sat for about 15 minutes without this person not coming. Again, I'm like, what am I waiting for? 
who am I waiting? Who am I waiting for? Yeah. No, you will find out. I'm like the fact that you stopped me and you bring you brought me here. Clearly, you have an idea. Mm -hmm. You might not have the whole story. Sure, but, but you know something. You know something. Sure. Give me that. You understand? They didn't want. You understand? I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. They're like, no, 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 sit down. I'm like, what is it about? Then they were like, no, we want to ask, are you Dr. Matthew? I'm like, ah. I'm like, so? And then? <laughs> they were like, no, we want to ask you a couple of questions. I'm like, about what? No, you know the department has opened a case, so we want to ask you questions. I'm like, no. Who is asking this? Who's saying all of this? So the security. Oh, is now the it's the one. security yeah. still. So, Andre, I am insisting on. Oh, on being told. Being told. Give me, that person sure. can come, but sure. at least let me sit here knowing what am I waiting for. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. She's like, no, we just want to ask you a question. And I, I'm like, no. I'm like, it's very, and I said it, it is inappropriate for you guys to ask me a question. And yet the police have not taken my statement. Remember they opened the case on the 9th of December, of October. This was on the 29th. So all those weeks passed. In fact, when we found out that the case was opened again through the media, myself and my attorney went to Brixton, presented myself at Brixton, and the investigating officer said, okay, there's not really much in the docket for us to arrest you. Give us your information. I gave my address. I gave my number. I gave a copy of my ID, my attorney's information, everything. They're like, when we need you, we will contact you. Okay. Two days later, the police came to my apartment. They confirmed that I stayed there. They found me, asked neighbors, no problem. So I'm now waiting for the investigation to continue and for me to be brought in for questioning. So I said to them, I've not been questioned by the police. Why would I give you guys a statement or answer something that is going through a police investigation? And you are working for the department. The department is the one accusing me. So I'm not entertaining it. If you want questions, I can provide you the contact details of my attorney. At this point, I'm mad. I'm irritated. You understand? Again, in my head, now I'm thinking, Vele, Vele, we are still here to sign that statement of the unknown patient. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going. They're like, no. I'm like, am I under arrest? They were like, no. I'm like, okay, I'm going. Yeah, yeah. So I fought to leave that room. You understand? And because for them, their communication with this um, person is delayed somewhat. I then went, proceeded to go to the bathroom again. I am just like, you know, I'm just trying to go back to casualty so I can literally tell the person I came with, what just happened? Okay. You understand? Okay, I'm in the bathroom. I finish. I leave. So as I leave, they are following me. They are, they are talking on their walkie-talkie. I'm just going out, right? And when you go out, because of that emergency room is closed, you have to basically like go outside and then climb that hill nyana to go to the casualty. How all of a sudden, commotion. Vimba, Vimba, Yebat, what are we Vimbaing now? So I look back, it's torches, walkie talkies are making noise. And I'm like standing there and they're pointing at me. And I'm like, what? Yo? They just grab. Boom! On the floor. So I'm basically like being not choke, it's not choke slam when they hold your throat, mm -hmm, but I'm literally mm -hmm. thrown on the ground. And I just feel this piercing pain going from my hip hmm. down to my leg. Hmm. And I'm screaming. I'm like, get the F off me. Get off me. You now have more than 10 people busying, um, making noise. Others are coming. Backup is being called. Hmm. Hey, it's a commotion outside. I'm being picked up. I'm being punched. I'm being kicked. The mo I'm being dragged back. Back to where I'm from. That room. Back to that room. Yeah. I am now, at this point, the whole entire hospital is here in the commotion. So when I'm being dragged back, it's like, you know, a corridor of shame. People, but what was the patient there? But busy got Dr. Mayfield. Yay! Finally, So I, I get dragged 
I'm, I'm dragged to that room. I'm now fighting. That's the infamous video where I'm bleeding. Okay. And they are forcing my, forcing to handcuff me. This is after you've been kicked and thrown kicked, down. Kicked, thrown the most. Okay. Both my, my hands are handcuffed and my legs are handcuffed. Legs even. Yeah. Huh. And then the room is full of every boat. Bone on my face. In my face. Paparazzi. Paparazzi. Hence that sound um, where I'm like, everybody get out. Yeah, get yeah, out the room. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Because now I'm just traumatized. <sighs> you understand? Okay. Here comes this important person we were waiting for, which is the matron. Okay. At the time, she's the most senior. Nursing manager. Yeah. 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 So, because it's night, CEO, but who they are, are not there. So, yeah. she's And the, it's weekend. It's weekend. So, yeah. she's the, the one. Okay. She sits on the other side of the table. Yeah. It's only the security guards. And then she tells me, she's like, are you Dr. Matthew? I'm like, yeah, Muz. Lizalani videos that are TikTok. You can see Hore, I'm Dr. Matthew. You understand? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Then they were like, nope. So they start interrogating me mm. and they want this statement. And then they were like, yeah, you've brought the department into disrepute. You are bogus doctor, um, this and that and that. And we need, what are you doing here? So I'm telling them what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am here because we dropped off a patient on the 27th. And now we get asked for a statement, a statement, which is not out of the ordinary. I am here for that. So what's happening? They were like, no, no, no. She presents me a affidavit, but the Department of Health template one. On the wall, there is a picture of me, a, basically a wanted man picture with my picture. The Department of Health is saying, Mark Short. Mark Short. It's written, attention, members of the public and staff. This person is not a doctor. If you see this person on our premises, please report it. Or please something. report it, call security, everything. I'm looking at this. I'm like, how? What in the defamation of character is this? You understand? So now they are telling me that they've been on the lookout for me. The securities are laughing and saying, hey, this thing operation was successful. <laughs> what sting operation are we doing as security guards to only find out that them sending that communication was a way of lowering me there okay and because yes i'm wearing scrubs the scrubs is the ngo scrubs because it has the name the emblem of the ngo everything i'm now told that i'm assigned a statement and the confession statement had to go something like you know I came to the facility that day to pretend to be a doctor and that because they found my ARV treatment in my pocket because I was wearing a big jacket and they searched and that there was ARVs there that I was, my intention was to provide patients with ARVs. Basically, hey, you know, examining patients, slaughtering patients with medication, everything. And then I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. And in the same time, I'm bleeding from my mouth. My wrist, this one, you can even see this scar. Mm -hmm. It's swelling around the cuffs. And I'm in excruciating pain. And for me, I'm like, can I see a doctor? A matron said to me, no, you will only see a doctor if you send the confession. And I refused. And I was handcuffed for three hours. Hmm. I was handcuffed for three hours. It got so bad. The pain just became so excruciating that I just had to come up with something. In my mind, I'm like, Matthew, tell them what you, they want to hear. And you're going to sign this affidavit. Don't use your real name. Don't use your real ID number. Don't use your real signature. You will with Ibona afterwards. And I did. I wrote a fake name, fake surname, 
some random ID you? number. I was my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was my cousin. Yeah. So I gave my cousin's name, um, Mposwart, you yes. know. I gave that. I don't, yeah, I just made up an ID number. Sure. Made up a signature. And the matron is coaching me on what to write. Mm. And I'm writing it. And now she's like, now it's a proper interrogation. Now I agree I'm supposed to write, so they unhandcuff me. Okay, she's asking me questions. I'm now apologizing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean any harm. You know, this and that and that and that. I'm unaware I'm being recorded. I'm just saying what I'm, gonna, I'm focusing on this individual because I just need to see a doctor. It was only at the end that when I turned my head, their head of security is secretly recording me. And I'm telling him, I didn't give you permission to record me. And yeah, when are you not going to tell us anything? When are you going to jail? I'm like, whatever. I'm still standing my ground. I did nothing wrong. So now I'm supposed to see a doctor. I don't get to see a doctor. I'm handcuffed again. Now they call the police. Three hours after I was assaulted and kept there, only now the police are brought in. Mm -hmm. Brixton is literally two streets away. The police come. They don't ask me nothing. They don't ask me any questions. They are handed the confession. The police then say that, this person is injured. How did this person get injured? That is where, no, sorry. Before that, the security guards were also asked to write statements to give to the police to talk about how I, how I was arrested. So they are there get at their little corner, you know, cooking up a story. And then one of them is like, this person is going to go to court and is going to be injured. Bazoti sim shai, suzoti hai, he tried to escape. Okay, cool. The, the, the police, they were like, no, this person must see a doctor. Okay. Again, I'm, I can't walk. I can't walk, right? They're forcing me to walk. I can't walk. I'm just collapsing. You understand? Because my feet can't hold my body. I am handcuffed back to casualty. I get there. The matron has already told the doctors what happened. The doctor is like, how? Apparently, you jumped out the fourth floor window. I'm like, four. Four. I zoop, Spider-Man. I'm like, me. I'm like, no, I didn't. They call the orthopedic surgeon. They call all these doctors. I have a team of doctors trying to now assess these injuries. The doctors, they were like, what happened? I'm like, I was beaten. I didn't jump out a window. I was beaten. The doctors are writing, they are writing, they are writing. Okay, I was kept there for three, for two hours. And then they said, you have two options. So they said to me, your injuries are that you have a, a fractured wrist, a fractured hip, a, tip to, a chipped tooth. Um, and yeah, my 